Part 3 of Rebuilding a Large Old Twin Cylinder Steam Engine This video shows removing the connecting rods and big ends and the main bearings to allow removal of the crankshaft and an assessment of the condition of the crankshaft and bearings. At the moment you can see me removing the big end brasses from the crankshaft. The big end brasses are quite well made and as I'm looking at the crankshaft that is also very well made. The thing that spoils it is the fact that the big end brasses are held together with random screws. I'm going to change this to studs with proper lock nuts because it's fairly disastrous even on a small engine if the big end drops to bits whilst the engine's running. Looking at this crankshaft I have a sneaking feeling that it's turned in one piece which means that some real good engineers done this. Most people including myself and I must confess would make a crankshaft like this in modular form using several components to make up the crankshaft, then lock tightening it and pinning it together. This crankshaft is not made like that, it's turned in one piece, and you really do have to be a very good engineer to do this. To me it seems to be sacrilege to do such a bodge job on an engine when the crankshaft is made to such a good standard. And I look forward to seeing it running when I've finished rebuilding it. For now though, back to the job of dismantling the bottom end of the engine. As I remove the big ends from the crankshaft, you will notice that I immediately refit the bottom bearing using the original screws. This is so the orientation remains the same, although sometimes I have found that they've been put on the wrong way around anyway, so you have to sit and match them up. This shouldn't be the case with this engine because I can clearly see identification marks on the bottom end of the main bearings. You can see two dots on the middle one, and three dots on the one to the right and also on the big end brasses we can see two lines on each of them which means that the parts clearly do fit together. I'm now removing the bottom part of the main bearings underneath the engine so I can withdraw the crankshaft and have a close look at it. Also I need to have a real good look at the bearings. If these bearings are shot I will have to make new ones which will make the job much more complicated. But the bottom bearing which I'm looking at currently in my hand looks okay. The only thing I'm concerned about is how many shims there are between the two bearing halves. It's a little bit excessive, someone's been a bit over ambitious taking off some of the metal to tighten the bearings. I will look at this in greater detail as the build progresses. For now I'm just removing the rest of the bearing caps and I'll be able to pull the crankshaft out of the engine and have a real good look at it. And here it is, the crankshaft is now out of the engine, with the eccentric still attached, and I'm having a good look at it after cleaning it with a piece of cloth. And the bottom line is, it looks quite good. It's a bit out of focus here because I was busy actually looking at the crankshaft, not filming it, as I was concerned that I may be having to make a new one, but I don't have to make a new one, this one's fine, and it's very well made indeed. And it's also marked so that we know which big end goes where, Yes, yeah, a good engineer made this. Pity about the rest. As you can see here, there are quite a lot of shims on the main bearings, as I mentioned earlier. For the moment, I will just put the end caps back on in the right position and think about this later when I come to put the engine back together. And hopefully very soon, I will get rid of this really crappy box that it's mounted on and get it on a special base that I'm going to make so that the crankshaft will be more visible when the engine is running. Now that the crankshaft is out of the engine, I'm temporarily putting back the lower bearings in the right place, in the right way round, and putting the nuts on, not tight, just to hold them in place so I don't lose them. With the crankshaft safely out of the way, I'm going to remove the engine from the box. The box will then be put under the bench and will eventually be thrown away. Now I can have a close look at the bed plate and it's okay. I'm a little concerned about where the holes are drilled in the mounting lugs, but for now we just have the bed plate with the main bearings attached, the main stanchions that hold the cylinders, and the cylinders, soon to be removed. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.